<laughs> Today we're going to talk about the Galitza Vacuum Rhinestone Applicator. Uh, what you see here is a fancy little box with all the little fun stuff inside, and that's what we're going to go to right now. The Glitz Up tool comes complete with the actual vacuum assisted air pump here, the hand wand, and it also comes with three different tips. You have a very small tip for very small stones like the SS4, the SS6, even the SS8. The middle size tip can handle the 10, the 12, the 16, and the 20, and the largest tip will handle anything above a 20, including odd shapes, anything that would be other than a circle. And what also comes in the kit itself would be a, a handy little uh, small stand that pops up like a little letter Y. It helps keep the hot end of the tool off your work table. Now what you'll see on the Glitz Up tool is just two simple controls. You have a round dial that is basically your temperature guide. There are three different size dots. It's simply a guide. If you're using really small stones, you can keep it here on the small dot. You're using middle sized stones, you can move it. You're using large stones. Me, in my cases, I like to always have it up on the largest setting because I think working faster is a little bit easier. Now what you also have is a simple on-off switch. This on-off switch operates the vacuum pump. Now it'll have a vibration noise to it. All that is normal. It's what happens and you're going to hear a nice little drone in the background of the video. Here we go. Turning on that pump is exactly what it sounds like. It is just an air pump, like a, like a fish aquarium pump. Now we're going to shut it off for just a moment. When we have this turned on, it's not an instant heat. You do have to let it warm up. In some cases, I let it sit there for 10 minutes and get as hot as I need it to get. The tool itself will get up to most likely about the 400 degree mark when you're up this high. Okay, so don't touch the, the metal end. You, you'll only do that once. Now, what we're going to do is we're simply going to grab a couple of these SS10 crystals. The tip that we're using is the medium tip. I like to use that tip. It pretty much handles whatever I need. If I ever go to a small tip or the small stone, I will resort back to that small tip. Now the vacuum pump, we turn it on, and hopefully everybody can still hear me clearly. What we're going to do is we're going to cover the little vacuum hole here in the orange handle. This is a small piece of silicone that even though most of the heat is down in this section, this area will still get warm. And in some cases, people will tell me it gets very, very warm. Well, that's very true. So it's just something that's natural with the tool. There's nothing defective about it. It's just the nature of, of, of the beast. We cover the finger hole in a sense that I can have a movable finger. Once you cover that, do you hear the noise change? That extra noise tells you your vacuum pump is working. All you're going to do is place the tip right over the top of the stone, lift it straight up. Now, it's very kind of difficult to see in this case, but that glue will melt. This size stone can take five or six seconds. The glue melts, you put it back on the shirt where you need it to be, and all I'm going to do is put a couple of stones in this embroidered image, and we're just going to simply place it, push down, move the finger, and lift up. Now all we're doing is adding a little bit of embellishment, a little bit of bling to something that's already been decorated with embroidery. You can do put stones rather on almost anything. The glue of a stone is most effective on a fabric, on a textile. You can still put stones, the glue will work on a hard item, but mostly as a novelty. If you're going to put it on a shelf, hang it on a wall, it's fine. Not things that you handle every day. You're not going to use stone glue like what you see here on most stones that are rhinestone related. You're not going to use that glue on hard goods like sunglasses and cell phones, uh, coffee mugs that get used on a daily basis. The nature of a rhinestone is for textiles. That's what it's for. Okay, so we're going to grab another stone. We're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to try to finish up a little design. All we're doing is going right over the top. You can count to five or six and make sure that the stone melts. Once you get into a pattern of using this size stone and you're counting the five, you can do that pretty much methodically and go through your design. We're going to grab another stone and do the exact same process. This time, hopefully, I'll hit my mark. We're going to wait about five or six seconds, like I said, at this point. When I'll show you a bigger stone in a few moments, you'll see the glue melt. Put that where you want it, push down, move your finger, leave it alone. We're going to put maybe one or two more on this and do the exact same thing. We're counting the five. Some folks will even pick up a stone and push it straight down on the fabric and then leave the gun in place. You can do it either way. Both of them work. All you're trying to do is give it a nice even heating. 
Now one thing I want to show you, I'm going to show you a stone that hopefully will be able to see the glue melt very, very well. Now my, uh, my cameraman is going to tell me if this can be in focus. We're going to move it a little closer. What you'll most likely notice is as this is an SS20, in about 10 or 12 seconds that glue will get shiny and melty. It should be getting melty right now, I can see the glisten. Okay, what you can see, better with your eyes, we can't catch on camera all the time, but once that glue is hot, it will get uh, liquidy looking, so it'll be nice and shiny. Now, I don't know where I'm going to put that, so we're simply going to put it on, let's see, we'll put it on the corner of this cloth, just because we can. Okay, now I have on the table here a couple other odd shapes. In the case of odd shapes, you could pick up a stone, put it where you want it, and then put the tool over it to melt it. That's completely up to you. I don't want to ruin this cute little uh, young lady's outfit here. It goes on my wall in my office. But you can use shapes. You can change the, the tip. The way I change a tip is simply to use a dry paper towel, fold it up several times. I unscrew it. I put it on a metal surface so it won't do any damage, and I put on another tip. So just to recap, what you have here, folks, is you can put stones, nail heads, rind studs on fabric items that allow the glue to get penetrate and they stay exactly where they are. Now one thing I would like to point out, when you're finished with a design, it's always best if you have access to a hand iron or a heat press to put that garment under a heat press or a heat source for 15 seconds or so, maybe 12 to 15 seconds to give everything a nice even heating. It's recommended, it gives you a nice peace of mind. The tip will transmit the heat through and melt the glue properly, but if you have the option to put it under a secondary heat source, it's always a benefit.